Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and today I'm going to talk to you about what to wear underneath your armour. In particular, I'm talking about something that you wear in the 15th century under plate armour. One of the things that is really tricky to tell is what is worn underneath armour. In the documents we do have some just a few tell us a few things we've already done a video uh, I did a video with Matt Easton talking about um, the arming doublet it says strongly made with fustian and lined with satin uh, and you will have seen my arming doublet in that video as well now there's something to say about medieval armor everything is really individual so people didn't tend to um, all work to one pattern. Everyone had their own ideas and some people um, subscribed to one theory and others subscribed to another. Very much like today. Even in, uh, um, in something like a military, we kind of, when we look back on medieval periods, we tend to read into it a modern idea of military. So things like um, what people should wear, what colours they should wear, is something that's a very modern idea. The idea of a uniform isn't really there. Certainly there's certain things that people were expected to turn up to battle with, and wearing the colours of your lord would definitely be a good idea if you didn't want to um, get killed by the wrong person. So anything that we find out about what you would wear underneath armour um, can't be generalised to everyone, okay? So the document that we've looked at before, How a Man Shall Be Armed at His Ease to Fight on Foot, is one from, which is usually dated to around the middle of the 15th century, uh, it, it, English, and it explains that you should wear a strong arming doublet with points uh, made out of the same things that crossbow strings are made out. So we're talking really strong points. And that's to hold the armour onto the arming doublet. Now, there's a few things that have been cropping up in art, and I've been seeing them, and it's been making me wonder if there's something else that we sometimes wear underneath armour. Not actually instead of an arming doublet, but in addition to. Now you see these coats crop up and in some cases they are what we would probably define as livery coats. The livery coat is something that is usually considered to show your allegiance to a lord and we see some examples of these being worn over the top of armour in these pictures here. But these livery coats are not all made to the same pattern. Remember this isn't a modern army everyone makes things differently and does things differently. Some livery coats would be um, without sleeves like these ones. Some weren't. Some would just look like normal coats. It depends what you've been given. And in fact, some people who received their livery from their lord didn't actually get given a coat, but instead got given an amount of cloth, which they then used to either create a coat or a badge or a bend, which is a strip a strip of cloth which goes over your shoulder. So there's loads and loads of ways that you can make a livery and the sleeveless coats that we see here um, are definitely livery coats but there are other, exa other examples of them that make me think that maybe there's something else and this is coupled with a few examples where we see the hem of some other garment coming out from underneath the plate armour but on top of the male armour and you can see this here. Now this may well be the livery coat being worn underneath the plate armour, it may be just a normal coat being worn under the plate armour to, um, to try and protect the doublet in some way or to reduce chafing. But here is another example which is shown on an effigy. This is the effigy that I'm having reproduced at the moment. And you can see at the collar, you've got the 
doublet collar, then there's a line across, and then there's a rolled edge, which appears to be the top of the cuirass. So it's possible that the top of the cuirass is this middle line, but that would suggest that the top of the cuirass isn't rolled, which I would feel would be quite uncomfortable. The rolled edge to me seems to be the top of the cuirass, and this middle layer, I think, is another garment underneath the armour, but on top of the arming doublet. Now, because I'm having this effigy, um, because I'm having this effigy reproduced, I was thinking about having this garment reproduced as well, and I was thinking of doing it in a wool, maybe a strong wool with um, a fustian. Um, lining to it to make it strong and possibly even um, lace my um, my leg armor to it. However, there's a document that I have come across this weekend. Um, Augusto, who if you've been following the channel, uh, you may have seen a video where I interview him about uh, uh, Great Helms, but he posted this link to a website and you can find the link down below which shares a document from around 1480 to 1510, around about that time. Uh, so around the time of Richard III or Henry VII, which explains all of the things that a knight or a squire should bring with them into the field. Now, I am definitely going to be doing another video on this um, because there's so much in there that I really, really want to um, be able to share with you and look at all of these really cool things. But um, actually the thing that really caught my eye and made me want to do this video now is what it says you need to have um, underneath your armor. So it says that you need an arming doublet. In fact, it says that you need two arming doublets and I know exactly why that is. Having fallen off my horse at Arundel International Tournament um, the armour was mostly fine, but the arming doublet um, split at the seams as I hit the ground. So um, arming doublets need to be strongly made, and even if they are strongly made like my one, then um, you still could do with a spare. So this is have two arming doublets. One's obviously the spare. And secondly, it says to have a leather jacket to wear underneath your armor. Now, that just got me really excited because I've been thinking about what this line meant on the effigy. I was thinking about the fringes that were shown underneath plate armor um, and thinking about these um, sleeveless coats. And then here we now have a text reference to some kind of extra garment that is worn in addition to an arming doublet so there's no denying this is separate to the arming doublet but it is worn underneath the armor this is really really exciting to me so now what i'm thinking is i'm going to um have a example of these made one of these made to go underneath the um armor and we're going to try it out there's so many questions that come from this. Um, how do you wear it in relation to the other parts of your armor? Do you wear the male skirt underneath it or do you wear it on top? Um, do you lace anything to it? Is it used for that or is it just to stop the arming doublet from being um, worn away by the plate armor? I'm really, really interested to find out more about this. So. If you're interested in that sort of thing as well, then do hit the subscribe button um, and I'll be giving some updates on this as well. This one, I think it needs to be leather. I'm not entirely sure what kind of leather I think it should be. I'm wondering if maybe a buff leather like, um, like you would find in the later periods being worn instead of armour or underneath just a cuirass. I wonder if that's the kind of thing. Maybe is this an extra piece of protection um, for the torso? Another possibility would be that if it's just there to stop chafing, then you want it to be really quite thin and it's just to go over the arming doublet. So a thinner leather um, would work quite well there. 
what do you think? How would you make it? If you were going to uh, reconstruct this garment, how would you do it? And why would you do it like that? Leave me a comment down below. If you want to see updates on this and the other projects that I'm currently doing, then I do have a Patreon where I'll be sharing those updates. Um, everything will end up on the channel in the end, but uh, um, this is just an extra way that people can support me and also um, can I can share my updates as they happen. I'm currently working on making some modifications to my gauntlets and uh, um, then I'm also going to be doing some extra stuff for my, um, my tent and things. Hopefully get it all done ahead of Tewkesbury in July, which uh, um, is my next event where I'll be in armour. Thank you so much for coming along guys and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.